in that scenario. And then you're likely to see something like Bitcoin come back in, which is, you know, back in back in November, I was the only person. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is Garrett Soloway, chief market strategist and CFO of WWW. In the moneystocks.com, Garrett Soloway has been an avid swing and day trader since his days at Binghamton University. In this video, he talks about how he thinks charts are emotional because they are based on human emotions. Soloway claims that the crypto market is full of retail traders, that is why it is so volatile, but in the future he predicts some big things for Bitcoin. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Stocks rose on Wednesday after the minutes of the Federal Reserve's May policy meeting showed the central bank is prepared to raise rates further than the market had anticipated. The Dow Jones Industrial Average jumped 191.66 points or 0.6% to 32,120.28. The S&P 500 climbed 0.9% to 3,978.73, and the Nasdaq Composite advanced 1.5% to 11,434.74. All of the major averages are currently on pace for a winning week. The minutes from the Fed's May 3-4 meeting showed officials saw the need to raise rates quickly, and possibly more than the market has priced in, to quell the recent inflationary pressures. Nordstrom shares leapt more than 14% after the company surpassed sales expectations and raised its full-year outlook. Dick's Sporting Goods gained about 9.7% on strong earnings despite cutting its outlook. Best Buy climbed nearly 9%, despite getting a downgrade from Barclays which followed a mixed earnings report Tuesday. Elsewhere, tech stocks bounced after leading market losses in the previous session. Intuit jumped 8.2% after the tax software company reported better than expected quarterly profit and revenue, and the firm raised its current quarter outlook. DocuSign and Zoom Video each rose more than 8% too. Nvidia added 5% ahead of its earnings after the bell. Gareth Soloway, a pro trader, talks here about stock trading and investment strategies in detail. Remember to watch till the end where we will list the top 10 stocks to buy right now. What's amazing about the charts is that charts represent human emotion, really. And so by reading and almost playing counter trend to human emotion, you're able to actually make money. And, and again, people might say, well, why are charts emotion or human emotion? Well, because buyers and sellers are humans, right? I mean, people are buying stocks or selling or buying crypto, selling crypto. And, and basically a chart as it goes up, it's telling you people are getting greedier and they're running and chasing it and vice versa on the downside. So really that's what a chart represents is that the emotion of the, the investing public. And it's weird because it's if you're a contrarian, if you know how to read that and go opposite, that's where you'll find the big money in investing. I mean, it's it, it, just like anything, it takes study, right? So so I always like to tell people that you, know, you can't expect to come into the market and, and you remember, you're facing like billion dollar algorithms that Goldman Sachs and these these bigger companies built and they're sharks. I mean, think of great white sharks and we're kind of like the seals in the water. So you have to learn how to avoid the the kind of the pitfalls there of 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 that kind of stuff. So so if you're going to be a brain surgeon, right, you have to go to school for X amount of years, you have to study and all this stuff and you have to pay. I mean, think about the amount of money. Right. So so the same thing applies to investing. If you if you if you want to be a pro, if you want to be someone that's making money, you're going to have to put some some energy and effort into studying it. So that's number one. But I think number two is that you know the charts. What I found is that when you have specific rules, and this is this is the discipline of trading, is that when you have specific rules that you abide by, you start to recognize that okay, I've done this type of pa pattern trade. 50 times or 100 times and out of 100 times it works out 80 percent of the time so as long as you have those probabilities on those pattern formations and you actually know what to look for then you actually start to become the casino house versus the gambler like the gambler walks in generally a thousand gamblers go in most of them will lose one or two may win but you want to be the house of the casino so everything i do is based on this pattern forms x amount of times and it it makes this move 
per X percent of times. And I'm just looking for those repetitive features in the market. And the reason why they work generally more times than they don't is because again, it's all human emotion, right? So you know that when people are buying that Bitcoin at 65 or 68,000 and there's so much hype, you know you're near a turning point, vice versa. You know, recently we saw, we saw crypto just bottoming out and people were panicking as UST was collapsing and all this other stuff. And same thing applied, people were overly panicked and then now we're seeing the bounce back. So it, it's just, again, it's, it's noticing and, and studying patterns. And then when they repeat and you know the percentages on them and you've done it for as many years as I, you start to just become robotic and you say, okay, well, listen, two times out of a 10, I'm going to lose on this trade, but you know what? Eight times I'm going to win. So let me just always do it and then let the percentages kind of handle themselves. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have a specific algorithm, but I do have components that I look at. So number one, I, I look at like a, something like a CNBC. I look at a, you know, the, the financial media out there. You know, the more articles that are popping in front of me talking about like, you know, this is such a scary market. It's a bear market or, or this is an amazing bull. It's going to go on forever. I start to say, okay, sentiment is too much to one direction. I also look at social media. Social media has become an amazing platform to gauge sentiment. Uh, one of the best signals I do is I post on on Twitter, right? I'll, I'll you know I'll say, hey guys, I like this stock in this direction or this crypto in this direction. And if you, the more people attack that point of view and say, oh, you're crazy, da da da, and and they're never attacking it in a technical way. It's always emotional, right? Oh, you're crazy. You're never going to see this go below this price and. All of a sudden, the more people that do that, the more it makes me realize that sentiment has gotten too bullish in that scenario. And then you're likely to see something like Bitcoin come back in, which is, you know, back in back in November, I was the only person out there that was saying Bitcoin isn't going to go any higher than than the 65, 69,000. And we've obviously seen it come down dramatically. But I mean, people were just calling me insane at that point. But it was a great technical kind of, uh, you know, emotional indicator. So. Yeah, I, th I think one of the biggest things to kind of keep in mind that I've caught that I've kind of become aware of is that specifically in the crypto markets, and this isn't as much for the stock market because you still have these institutions that are holding Apple and so forth, but the crypto markets are driven by greed and fear, right? I mean, there's so many small investors out there. So what that does is it makes that makes crypto go much, much higher than you think it can go and much, much lower than you think it can go because there's so much retail kind of emotion that's being pushed either way. Now, if you look at a stock like Apple, I mean, you know, you have Warren Buffett owning a huge, but he's not trading, he's not panicking in, in those scenarios. So you don't get that same sort of crazy, crazy, ridiculous moves. Yeah, so so right now it's a wild ride. It, crypto is is absolutely a a risk asset, which means that when people are panicking and, and the markets, we are seeing the stock markets going down. Crypto is going to go lower. I do think eventually crypto settles down and becomes more of a mature asset, especially Bitcoin. Uh, I really do believe that Bitcoin will be the future digital gold out there, where it'll be a store of safety. But you know what I always say to people is keep in mind that. Bitcoin has only been around since 2009, so it's effectively a 13-year-old. So we can't look and say, you know, you don't look at a 13-year-old and say, okay, you need to act like a 50 or 60-year-old or a grandparent, right? They're, they're very emotional at that age. They're very kind of off the wall. And that's the way crypto is behaving because it's, it's a young asset. Now, if you look at gold, right, gold has is, is been around for, is used as a store of safety for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And it only moves like 1% on a crazy day, maybe half a percent on a normal day. So you get much more of a stable, mature asset in that in that respect. So eventually, I think crypto grows into that, but it's just such, such a new asset right now that it's very, very volatile. People are still trying to figure it out. Absolutely. If you're looking to buy stocks but don't know where to start, the list below presents 10 of the best Reddit stocks on the market. Number one, Lucky Block, overall best stock to buy now on Reddit. Number two, Tesla, best electric vehicle stock to buy. Number three, GameStop one of the best Reddit stocks to short squeeze potential. Number four, Sue Video Communications, popular growth stock with rebound potential. Number five, Snap Inc., leading social media platform trading at a discount. Number six, Best Buy Co. popular Reddit stock with meme stock backing. Number seven, Twitter, best Reddit stock with Elon Musk's backing. Number eight, Palantir Technologies, beaten down tech stock with long-term growth prospects. Number nine, Canopy Growth Corp., one of the best penny stocks on Reddit. Number 10, JP Morgan Chase, best Reddit stock for exposure to the financial sector. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content.
Thank you.